good afternoon today uh, we are going to discuss how absorption approach can be complemented with the elasticity approach we will work on the earlier equations on the changes in incomes So, how uh, absorption approach can complement the elasticity approach? This can be done by working on these two equations. Please recall that the first equation is the changes in income as a function of the autonomous change in expenditures, the policy induced change in expenditures and autonomous change in net exports. Now, the only difference that we do now is that we divide this into two components one is purely autonomous and the other is the one which relates to the elasticities so if you had recall dn was p1 c1 star e pi pi dot e pi is e1 star plus e2 minus 1 this is foreign import demand elasticity home import demand elasticity. It will be proper to write this as foreign import demand elasticity because you may get confused uh, like whatever is your exports, the demand for it, I yesterday called it as export demand elasticity. But uh, when I went back, I thought that probably for your understanding, it, it will be better that you write foreign export demand elasticity is foreign import demand elasticity. So, this is what we have been maintaining, this is what you have been writing. There was some confusion yesterday, so keep writing this as foreign import demand elasticity. So, either you call it this or you can call this as home exports demand. Yeah, so, so it is always better to call it foreign import demand elasticity and in this model we are only considering one, there are only two trading partners that is you and the foreign country. As I said if you have to extend it beyond uh, two trading partners then the first thing that you need to do is work on this exchange rates it will not be a bilateral exchange rate, it will be a weighted average of the bilateral exchange rates. And then you need to work out the total imports, so import demand elasticity. To add to this, yesterday I said that you can fit an econometric model to work out elasticities. So, if you have import data, 
you can take that as your dependent variable imports as your dependent variable as a function of the price of imports right you can have uh, other set of variables which have an impact on imports for example your incomes then prices price of imports price of the other goods and incomes so you can build on the you can build a econometric model and then uh, take the logs on both sides so that the coefficients that you get are the elasticities so that will be a one simple way of measuring the import demand elasticities you can do it for different products you can work out the import the elasticities for different products disaggregated you can get figures for the different products for example petroleum product your import demand elasticity it is hypothesized that it will lie anywhere between 0 to say 1 reason being even if the price of petroleum increases such is our demand such is the energy demand in india and china that not much change will be there in dem in the demand even if the prices go up so that that is a matter of testing you test it using the appropriate data and work out the elasticities so the only change that i have done here is now dna is dna a dash autonomous change in net exports and something which is induced induced because the elasticities come come into picture this is the mlr term marshall lerner robinson term which comes in which is even star plus e2 minus 1 so then dy is dy into s plus m is daa daG plus dna dash plus p1 c1 star e pi pi dot So, working on this income and defining yt to be the level of income needed to achieve the internal balance, you can work out a relationship between the policy induced expenditures and the other terms. So, if you are plotting expenditure policy on the y axis, that is taxes or interest rates on the y axis and nominal or real exchange rates on the x axis then you will get a, a curve 
a line which shows different combinations of expenditure policy and nominal exchange rate which will give you internal balance. So please have a look at the relationship between policy induced expenditures and the exchange rates. Given that E pi is greater than 0, that means MLR condition holds, an increase in the exchange rates here shows a reduction in the policy induced expenditures. Reduction in the policy induced expenditures means more restrictive expenditure policies. That means you can reduce expenditures only by increasing the tax rates or the interest rates. Okay. So it's not that we are plotting DAG and nominal, we are plotting expenditure policies, taxes or interest rates. So if pi goes up, this policy induced expenditure comes down. This can only come down if the tax rates or interest rates go up. So therefore, it's an upward sloping curve. It shows all combinations of expenditure policy and nominal or real exchange rate, which will give you internal balance. What is the economic interpretation? If there is devaluation, there will be a switch in expenditure from foreign to home goods. As soon as it, it is done, it leads to an increase in incomes. If the incomes go up, the only way to bring back your income back to equilibrium or to have an internal balance is to increase the tax rates or the interest rates or adopt more restrictive expenditure policies. So therefore, you see an upward sloping YY curve which shows different combinations of expenditure policy and exchange rate, which will give you the internal balance. So this is the internal balance curve. No, please have a look at this. Each point shows combinations of expenditure policy and nominal exchange rate which will give you internal balance. How? Say you are here, you depreciate your currency. So there will be a switch in expenditure from foreign to domestic goods. Right? And you know what happens here. See here if the DNA term increases, what, what, what does it mean? It, leads to an increase in incomes. The only way the incomes can come down is to have increase the interest rates, which will decrease the investments and which will decrease the incomes through the Keynesian multiplier or increase the tax rates, which will reduce the consumption expenditure, which will reduce aggregate demand, which will reduce incomes. So that is why it is upward sloping, upward sloping. Remember DAG, this DAG is DD minus SR minus IR DR and this D is G minus T. Okay? This is policy induced expenditures. So the tax rates, the interest rates, they are, the tax rate is part of the fiscal policy, interest rate is part of the monetary policy. So this is the internal balance curve. Let's get the external balance curve. How do you get the external balance curve? From the second equation, you work on this. So dn is equal to s, s plus m, the autonomous component, the induced component, and then the expenditures. So again, if you have to relate expenditure policy with nominal or real exchange rates,
look at this equation. It's policy induced expenditure. It's related to autonomous change in net exports. The induced change in the net exports because of the changes in the elasticities and the exchange rate. Autonomous changes in expenditures, DAA, plus S plus M by M, DK. Now, uh, if N is the current account balance, K is the capital inflows. This is the current account balance, this is the capital inflows, the sum should be equal to 0. So, d n plus d k is equal to 0. So, you get d a g to be equal to this. Now, see the relationship between pi dot and d a g. If there is depreciation of the currency, it would lead to an increase in expenditures. So, then you should have less restrictive expenditure policies for maintaining the external balance. This equation shows different combinations of the expenditure policy and nominal exchange rate which will give you the external balance. And it will not be upward sloping, it will be downward sloping. FF curve, this is the FF curve, this is the YY curve. Now, uh, see the economic reason, reasoning. If there is a depreciation of the exchange rate, it would lead to an improvement in the current account balance provided MLR condition holds. So, you would see a surplus in the balance of payment. The only way that this surplus can be curbed is to have a less restrictive expenditure policies, reduce taxes, reduce interest rates, increase the expenditures, increase the incomes, incomes would increase the imports, so that that surplus which was created can be curbed to zero. So, as you increase the exchange rate, you need to reduce the tax rates or interest rates. Or in other words, you should have less restrictive expenditure policy to maintain the external balance. So, FF is the external balance curve. It shows all points of the expenditure policy and nominal or real exchange rate, which will, wherein you will have an external balance. Remember external balance, external balance is whenever you have a balance of payment equilibrium, you have a balance of payment equilibrium. So then, the optimal levels of expenditure policy and nominal exchange rate which will give you internal and external balance is this much and this is the exchange rate which will give you both external and internal balance. Now, let us think of a situation where there are shifts taking place in the YY and the FF curves. Now, what I want to ask you is that if all points on the YY curve shows internal balance, what if some point is above YY curve? Will you have an unemployment in the economy or will you have 
uh, inflation in the economy. Remember, as you move up, you adopt more restrictive expenditure policies. So any point above the YY curve will show you unemployment because it is more restrictive expenditure policy. Any point below would show an inflation. Any point above the YY curve will show a balance of payment surplus. Any point below the FF curve will show a balance of payment deficit. Why? Because you are, if you are above FF curve, more restrictive expenditure policies, higher taxes, higher interest rates, reduces income, reduces imports, so you have a balance of payment surplus. So if the economy is somewhere here, right, is somewhere here, you have an unemployment in the economy and you have a balance of payment surplus. right? So we will come back to this point that if your economy is out of this equilibrium, is there a way to reach back to a point where you will have both internal and external balance? For that to happen, someone should be assigned a job. Someone should be assigned a job of maintaining expenditure policy. Someone should be assigned a job of maintaining the nominal exchange rate or changing the nominal exchange rate. So there are two instruments, one is the exchange rate, the other is the expenditure policy and you have two policy targets, you have internal balance and you have external balance. The rule, the assignment rule is that the number of instruments should be at least as large as the number of policy targets. Which one? This one? This was auto autonomous change in net exports. Now there is a purely autonomous, uh, autonomous net export term and there is another term which is induced because of the changes in the exchange rate. Because we, yesterday we saw that DN is a function of of this P1, C1 star E pi pi dot. So you have one component which is purely autonomous now and there is another component which is a function of E pi pi dot. Absolutely. So all this is with the assumption that MLR holds. All this will hold if MLR holds. So the number of instruments should be as large as the number of policy targets. Now let's go back to what we had discussed earlier. Remember when we discussed, uh, when we were discuss, discussing interdependent model, then we came across two shocks which happened in the economy. One was an increase in autonomous expenditures right which led to increase in incomes you moved beyond your uh, full equilibrium income so you were out of the internal internal balance and then when you increased expenditures it also led to deficit in the economy because increases in expenditure leads to increase in incomes increase in incomes leads to in increase in imports so it led to deficit in the economy we resolved it by saying that whenever you increase expenditures, the only way to bring back the economy back to equilibrium, that is having both internal and external balance, is to bring back, cut back on the expenditures. So expenditure changing policies led, led to the uh, uh, changes in expenditures which brought back our economy back to equilibrium. Because if you reduce expenditures, incomes will come down, your deficit which was earlier there, it would be curbed and by changing one instrument, you were able to bring back your economy back to equilibrium. 
you could focus on two targets. This is what we did earlier. And this I did by showing you two equations. One was this. The other was dn, which was s plus dna minus m by s plus m daa dag. This was not the interdependent model. This was what happens if this goes up. So this goes up. This goes down. The only way to bring it back is to reduce expenditures so that this comes down. And if this comes down, this will go up and you are back to equilibrium. By changing one instrument, you could focus on two targets. What I am going to show was that this is an exception. The general rule is that the number of policy instruments should be as large as the number of policy targets. This question was there in the mind of Professor Mandel, who looked at this question, which he called it as an assignment problem. Assignment problem. The assignment problem was to work out an instrument which has the most or the greatest impact on the targets. So you choose those instruments which have the greatest impact on the, on the targets. So uh, let's see uh, how we can resolve the questions that he had in mind, the assignment problem. Assignment problem, first thing is you have to decide about the, the instruments, the appropriate instruments for the target. So the assignment problem is deciding about the appropriate instruments for the policy targets. Now given this diagram, let's bring back that shock that we discussed earlier. And we say that there is an increase in autonomous expenditures. If there is an increase in autonomous expenditures, please have a look at this equation. DAA changes. DAA changes. This goes up. This will go down. So what do you think will happen to the YY curve? And what is the economic interpretation? Okay. So we are bringing back the earlier days. We are, we are we are, think, we are bringing in the shock. The shock is increase in autonomous expenditures. What do you think will happen to the YY curve? What will happen to the FF curve? What will happen to the expenditure policy? What will happen to the nominal or real exchange rates? So think for a moment and then you will get an answer. So when DAG goes, you can see that there is a negative relationship between autonomous expenditures and policy induced expenditures. So then if this policy induced expenditures have to go down, the only way it can go down is to adopt more restrictive expenditure policies. Right? So you would see an upward shift of the YY curve. What about the FF curve? The equation for the FF curve is this. DAA changes. DAG is there. So if this goes up, DAG goes down. If DAG has to go down, you have to adopt more restrictive, more restrictive expenditure policy. So the FF curve also shift up so then this is the new equilibrium point where you will have both internal and external balance 
if there is an autonomous change in the expenditures, the only way to bring back the economy back to equilibrium, that is, have, that is uh, having both internal and external balance, is to adopt more restrictive expenditure policies or increase taxes or interest rates. If you do this, you will bring back your economy back to internal and external equilibrium. Okay. This is the earlier result that we showed. That if you increase expenditures, your incomes go up, you have a deficit. If you have to bring back deficit to zero, you have, if you have to bring back your incomes back to the full employment level of output, then you need to reduce expenditures. Okay. You need to reduce expenditures. How you can reduce expenditures? By increasing tax rates or interest rates. So this particular thing which you can see from here shows that only by changing one policy instrument you are able to achieve two targets. This is an exception that we discussed. That time we, I didn't say that this is an exception but now you can see that this is an exception because you had two targets just by changing the expenditure policy you were able to achieve both internal and external balance. Absolutely, because you can see that this expenditures, they are part of this equation as well as the, 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 the change in trade balances. And uh, remember when you change expenditures, it tends to have an impact on incomes but it also has an impact on the balance of payments. So that's the reason. Now what I want to, you to understand is that what is the economic interpretation that as the autonomous change in expenditures go up, you need to reduce the policy induced expenditures. Why? This happens because if you increase expenditures, This happens because if you increase expenditures, incomes go up and if you have to maintain internal balance, the only way you can do, do it is to reduce expenditures, policy induced expenditures because that will bring back the income back to equilibrium. So that's the reason that you see an upward shift of the YY curve. So this this term, this term, this term, these are like terms which, which will shift the curves. While if you change the exchange rate, you move along the YY curve. Right? Here if you see this equation, if, the, if you increase expenditures, It will increase incomes. When incomes go up, imports go up, you have a balance of payment deficit. The only way that you can bring down your deficit is to reduce the expenditures, policy induced expenditures. So that your incomes go down, your imports go down. And you are back to equilibrium. And therefore, you see an upward shift of the FF curve. So the new equilibrium point where you have both internal and external balance is this. At the end, you see that you have to adopt more restrictive expenditure policy to curb the increase in expenditures which took place initially. Any questions on this? Because if you are clear on this, then I will go to the second shock which happens in the economy. And you can think of the second shock. The first shock that we discussed was an increase in expenditure. The second shock is the switch in expenditure from foreign to domestic goods. Or you can think of 
switch in expenditure from domestic to foreign goods. Sir, yeah. Increase in expenditures. If the only way to have both internal and external balance is to cut back your expenditure. And this is an exception because by changing one instrument, you are achieving two policy targets. Generally, the rule is that the number of policy instruments should be equal to the number of tar policy targets. And then this Mandel in the 60s was thinking about which instrument should be aligned with which target. And the answer that he found was that you find that instrument which has the greatest relative effect on the target as an appropriate instrument. Okay? So this is what we are discussing. Now think of think of the second shock, the second shock, a switch in expenditure from domestic to foreign goods. Please write down. Switch in expenditures from domestic to foreign goods. A switch in expenditures from domestic to foreign goods. I'm absolutely DNA prime. Can you think of when there is a switch in expenditure from domestic to foreign goods? What was the appropriate response? So, what does it, what will happen in the economy? Can you think of when you switch your expenditure from domestic to foreign goods? What happens to the DNA dash term? It decreases. So remember what happens in the economy? Two effects. Incomes goes down and then what happens to the current account? Current account balance goes down. Right? Why? Because remember the two equations one was this, the other was this. So if this term, if this term goes down, there is a deficit and the incomes also go down. So you have a problem in the economy, you are out of internal balance, you are out of external balance. What is the appropriate, uh, what should be the appropriate policy so that you bring back your economy back to equilibrium? You switch back, you switch back your expenditures from foreign to domestic goods. Okay? That was because if you do that, then your incomes go up, your current account balance improves. Right? How would you show this here in the diagram? So let's make another diagram so that things become clear. I am just going to put There is an autonomous switch of domestic, of expenditures from domestic to foreign goods. So, look at first the equation. This goes down, so this has to go up. If this has to go up, what do you think will happen to the YY curve? 
expenditures have to go up. What do you think will happen to the tax rates or interest rates? They will have to go down. So the YY curve will shift down. What will happen to the FF curve? I will come to the economic, economic interpretation of why when DNA dash goes down, why do you increase DAG? But now we are only looking at one aspect that is shifting of the curves. And these are all shift factors. Now look at this equation which is the equation for the FF curve which shows different combinations of expenditure policy and nominal or real, uh, real exchange rate. Look at this equation DNA dash So DNA dash has gone down. Please have a look at this equation. What do you think will happen to the FF curve? This goes down. Now how can this go down? More restrictive expenditure policies or increasing tax rates or interest rates. So what do you think will happen to the FF curve? Uh, rightward shift. Right you are. So look at this what has happened, the expenditure policy remains as it is, but you depreciate your currency to bring back your economy back to equilibrium, right? So by changing one policy instrument, you are, you are able to bring back your economy back to equilibrium. This is the case that we discussed earlier. You can see when there is an autonomous switch of expenditure from domestic to foreign good, the response to this is that you switch back your expenditures to bring back your economy back to equilibrium. That means you depreciate your currency. That means you switch your expenditure from foreign to domestic goods. And this can be seen here. Right? Please go back home and try this. The third shock is, the third shock is an increase in labor force an increase in labor force, like in India you have now skilled manpower which has gone up, so increase in labor force. The fourth shock is that there is an increase in capital inflows. India is growing, so uh, people are eager to invest in India, so the, fo the fourth shock is that there is an increase in capital flows. Now you need to work out what impact will it have on the FF and the YY curves and what changes need to happen so that your economy is back to equilibrium, so that you achieve both internal and external balance. So this is what we are going to discuss in our next class. Thank you so much.